Hello everyone and welcome back to another Questions of Life. Today's question will be asked by yours truly and it's going to be overlaid with some sexy real gameplay because that game is sexy. But today's question will be a nuanced take on a question that Awolver asked in our Questions of Life series. It was the second one that he asked. It was, can people change? I'm going to take it a little personal here and change it to what have changed, what things have changed you, what events in your life have changed you, and how did they uh, change you? Uh, so, to start us off, I'm going to take us all the way back to wee little Bobby Me, who was in kindergarten, at, kindergarten or first grade at the time. Jurassic Park just came out on VHS. My parents bought it. I watched it. I loved it. I watched it again, and I loved it again, and watched it, watched it, watched it. I've seen that movie, I think, ten times now. I've also seen uh, Jurassic Park 3, I think, about five times. You know, I liked I liked dinosaurs is the main thing that you need to get out of this uh, and it's also part of the reason why I absolutely love the dragon fights and the big beasts fights in um, in all of the FromSoft games or in any game in general and why I like dragons so much in uh, in got Magic the Gathering absolutely love them because they're big giant beasts and they're ferocious and the card card mechanics for dragons are just so conducive to their actual like ferocity i fucking love it so uh when i was younger you know i had that i had that desire that love for big giant beasts and reptile type creatures like dinosaurs and i wanted to be a paleontologist now when I went into middle school, uh, I, I took this paleontology dream all the way through elementary school. I loved it. I talked about dinosaurs at length. I wrote about them. I read a bunch of books about dinosaurs. My parents bought encyclopedias and a bunch of other things about dinosaurs. I think I still have a bunch of them to this day. But uh, in middle school, that dream kind of died out because a lot of other students, uh, teachers, friends, people around me in general were just talking about how much more lucrative other fields of study were. The STEM fields in particular, uh, lawyering, law, um, doctors, medicine, so on and so forth. And they were touting this idea that money equaled happiness. You need to get a good job that pays a lot of money so you can be happy and all that sort of stuff. You need to be successful. And I kind of fell out of this uh, paleontology dream of mine because I didn't really hear much of uh, paleontology being a lucrative, lucrative career path um, as much as the other stuff that I mentioned. So I ended up trying to pursue the maths, the stems, and all of that sort of stuff. Then in middle school, we had to like attend a career fair. Uchiha and Aorbor, I know. If you remember, it was like that one day in middle school, I think in the eighth grade, when we had to go and attend some presentation by uh, people in their career in their career paths. And I went to this engineering one um, from a guy from 3M. He was, I, I think he was a Middle Eastern guy. He had a broken accent and the whole, whole nine yards. But uh, he presented about this tape that he had helped engineer. And one of the kids in, during the question section of this presentation asked how much the guy made. The guy said, well, you just need to do what you love. Money will come. If you do what you love, money will come. And I was like, wow, this wise man, this wise old man, speaking some wisdom here. And I, I, I tried to pursue the maths, I tried to pursue uh, some level of um, career that I would enjoy. And that's how I came across, uh, came across trying to write. Um, actually, I'd, when I was much younger, I enjoyed writing stories. We had an assignment where we had to write something, but uh, I'll talk about that later. Anyways... I, I tried to, to uh, see I tried to see how um, how the particular fields of study that I was I was pursuing would be fun. Um, so at first I wanted to be a computer scientist. I wanted to try to make an AI. I wanted to make it an, a human AI, as human as possible. I wanted to make it so I wanted to make it pretty much like August. Okay, that was my inspiration. I wanted to make I wanted to make a pure robot waifu. That was my entire reason for trying to be a computer scientist. Uh, and that didn't really quite pan out because uh, I didn't want to spend eight fucking years in school with huge amounts of student debt. So I uh, I ended up kind of like going for a lighter on the wallet type path. Went to community college, um, and then after that I ended up working as a tutor, and I absolutely love my job. I friggin' love teaching small children, uh, old children too, high school students I tutor as well and made me want to uh, pursue teaching as a career path it 
and that is how that is how my career aspirations have changed over the course of uh, I don't know, fucking old am I? Like, let's see, it, it would have been from kindergarten, so like twenty years maybe. So over the course of twenty years, went from paleontologist to computer scientist to teacher. Yeah, low bar there, low bar. Um, anyways, I was talking about the the author thing. That was a bit of a segue or side tangent in my um in my career aspirations there. But when I was really young, I I wanted to write. Um, we had an assignment in the third grade or the second grade. I don't remember, but it was in one of those elementary grades, and we had to come up with a story. And I absolutely loved it because I got to like write out my imagination, my fan fictions and all that. Uh, the terrible, the story was terrible, by the way. It was awful, but it opened up Pandora's box, okay? Just like, it just released, and I went, oh my god, I want to write more. And then I wrote even more shitty stories, and even shittier stories, and over the course of time, as I kept writing though, it got a little bit better, it got a little less, uh, a little less terrible, a little less cringy, and uh, I, th I, can't say that I'm the greatest of authors, or even a good one for that matter, but I feel like I could at least write a decent story, probably won't win any Nobel Prizes, Nobel Prizes, fuck, what's Bon Hart Loveless Prizes, that's the, that's the big story for children award, I think, big award for children books, I believe, won't win any of those, but you know what, it's better than the stuff that I, the schlock that I used to put out when I was younger, and when I was younger too, English never clicked with me. I was terrible at grammar. I was terrible at all of that, uh, all of that Englishy syntax sort of stuff. I was also terrible at making essays and even making speeches. I I was, woo, like wow, it's a miracle that I managed to get an A in CIS public speaking. Like seriously, uh, terrible at making them. Not so bad at performing them and giving them, but terrible at that stuff. Now over the course of time, as I kept writing and as I kept, like. Especially in philosophy class, when the writing wasn't so much, um, so much like graded, it was how you presented your argument and all that. I learned, I learned uh, all of those things, or rather, all of those, all of those lessons from English popped up, and I was actively applying them and relearning them and learning them better, because uh, I went from not being able to tell you whether a verb is uh, conjugated correctly or what the predicate of a sentence is, or what the noun in particular of a sentence is, or dependent clause, independent clause. I went from not knowing any of that stuff to like knowing that stuff within a matter of like a couple of years because I just kept practicing and writing on my own and just picking up, picking up all these like clues and keys from everyday use of the language and writing it, you know, in my computer. So I, that's something I'm quite proud of. I feel like I am at least at the level of a of a college student who is acing all of his English college classes. That is the level I believe my writing is at, and that might be a yeah, that might be a bit presumptuous of me, but I don't care. That this is something I'm quite happy about. So another thing too that has changed over my course of life, my short. 24, 25 years. I, I don't remember how old I am. Honestly, I stopped counting after 21. I was like, yeah, it's the only number that I care about. Um, I, I was a religious child when I was younger. In New York, my parents took me to uh, church, a Christian church to be exact. Church, uh, my mom had me baptized. Um, my dad was Hindi at the time and much to his chagrin. He also joined me and my mom at church. I didn't really care much for it. I even went to a Christian uh, preschool too, uh, where I learned, where I had some of my first terrible, awful memories of being wrongfully accused of pulling on a girl's hair when my feet were nowhere near a pulling distance of her. Some other dick bags were yanking on her hair, and I got blamed for it. That royally pissed me off. But that's neither here nor there. I went, I, I was full on Christian when I was younger. When we came to Minnesota, we lived in Richfield in a close-knit community in a poor part of the, um, of the, well, it, it was a middle, middle-class part of the, uh, God, Richfield, I guess city then. Uh, Richfield is a city. And, uh, our neighbors tried to, you know, get along with us, try to introduce us to their 
church said, hey, come on, be Christian with us. Let's do Christian things together. And we went. I ate a lot of snacks and food, went to Sunday school, met a lot of kids, had some fun. And I tried to get them to go back just so I could experience that fun again. We didn't really, they didn't really have any more parties after that. Uh, they had maybe one more, but uh, we didn't go as often. Eventually we fell out once, uh, once my parents got divorced. My mom became Buddhist, my dad became a, well, my dad was always Hindu, but you know, he went back to doing his Hindu stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, well, I guess no more church. Um, I I kind of fiddled around with the idea that you know there is a god, there is a good out, god out there. There's some divine force. There's you know something like that. But after after falling out of church, I kind of um, I was kind of wavering. I was a bit on the fence about that whole idea. And then in middle school, when I got my computer, my very first computer, which I have to this day, by the way, I love her. She's great. She may be old and dying, but she's still working, and working she shall stay. Until she kicks the bucket, in which case I'm going to fucking smash her to bits. In any event, uh, middle school happened, I got my computer, and I was introduced to the wonderful world of YouTube. And through YouTube, I came across a guy called the Amaz uh, Amazing Atheist. It was, it was literally by luck, by chance, that I found him. It, one of his videos was just like trending, and I was like, oh, what's this? I watched it, and I was like, interesting. Interesting. And it opened up my mind to, I guess, thinking a little more critically about um, about divinity and metaphysics and all sorts of other stuff. Because then I, you know, I went further into this rabbit hole. He never, he never really convinced me to go full atheist. I'm still agnostic, by the way. Still a bit on the fence there. Not quite sure, but am willing to entertain any idea of any sort of god, being or not being. Um, and you know, think about it, as any philosopher ought to. So, he opened me up, to, opened those doors up to me, so I owe him a great deal of thanks, even though I don't watch much of his content anymore. Um, I was able to then, uh, I guess, think about, think about ideas a little more deeply, and end up pursuing philosophy. In high school, uh, we had one singular, singular class about philosophy, and that intrigued me greatly, and I took it in uh, community college, took some more philosophy classes, so on and so forth. You get the idea. It's, uh, I went from, I went from being this, like, shithead that didn't know much about anything and didn't really care much about, like, about these higher ideas. All I cared about was, like, my next meal or, you know, like, what kind of job I'm gonna get or, like, how much money I'm gonna make to going, like, huh, you know, I wonder if there really is a dog out there. That sort of thing. So 13 minutes is more more than enough time to talk at length about this particular question. So that's it for me. Remember guys, drive fast, take chances.